Yes, people, welcome back to the channel. My name's Cass, and I'm your host doing the most all the time. But I'm here to talk about Ruben Amarim to Liverpool and how he would set up this side. Now, we all know Klopp's leaving at the end of the season. We know Michael Edwards is the new CEO, and we know there's a new director of football from Bournemouth who's got a very keen eye for some serious, serious players. But I think Liverpool have got a really good thing going on in here. I think this is the best option. Agree to disagree, in my opinion. Anyways, I believe Liverpool have got the players to set up perfectly for next window and also for the next upcoming season and I do believe there'll be a fair few players that could come in and also do a job but it's about who can adapt to the system and who can adapt very well but before we get into it guys please smash the like button do subscribe it does take you only two seconds and only subscribe if you like the content of course but we are on the way on the road to 30k if not 25k whichever mark you want to see but anyways look just a little snippet you guys can see what i'm gonna do a little bit of a setup there and you guys can see who i might even bring in and some ideas into this liverpool side if we quickly talk a little bit about shabby alonso i do believe this is the correct move um favorite obviously is now amarim Shabby Lonzo staying at Leverkusen. Let him land. That's all I would say. Let him land. He might come to Liverpool at another time. And I think a lot of Liverpool fans might be heartbroken at this point because obviously he was at the club for quite a few years, you know, won some good honours and ultimately a very good footballer and a very good tactical mastermind in this Leverkusen side who some would say is revolutionising the whole system. Um, but who knows? Let him land with Leverkusen. I think it's a good. I think it's. I think it's good. And I think Michael Edwards would know that. Bringing in someone with some what experience with actually, when you think about ma uh, managers that are really available, of top tier quality, they're not really around at this moment of time. So let him land, do his thing, and you know what? Be excited for this new system because this one plays a back three. Um, I just feel like this side is going to be better than what most people may think and yes Ruben Amram has got some questions around Europe and is you know is he good enough for that again patience a year and now look here look I've got a bit of a tactical setup I've gone with this and I do believe some of you might get annoyed potentially um maybe yes or no but this is what I'm going to go with now for me personally I think this is perfect people need to remember Canate used to play in the back three for Leipzig and especially when he's got a bit more cover and a bit more defensive uh, solidity with uh, in and around him he can really defend this wide space really well this space here right and it suits him yes he's been roasted by Martinelli a couple times here and there but you know not every player is going to have a great game so Canate suits this Van Dijk now this is the beautiful thing people need to understand this little position here is Van Dijk's bread and butter and also that switch I, I, I just feel like Van Dijk is just, you cannot get a better player in a better system right now than Van Dijk, who can obviously operate right here and go right into that middle space and actually drive with the ball. And sometimes he's even got the pingers, whether it's over here to the corners, he's got that in his locker. See, if you go back and look at Sebastian Quartes and what he was doing in the back three, he'd do exactly the same thing, whether it's setting up, which we can talk about with Alisson and how he does uh, build up play. This is it. Van Dijk is perfect for the system. And he did ask even in the Netherlands to go to a free, a back three when it was Louis van Gaal era. But of course, it's not been exactly shining stars and glitter over there for the Dutch side. But for this Liverpool side, it can be. Now, it always opens question. Now, this area here is going to be someone that has to be left footed. Most people have their own choices, whether it's a tap Soba or Gonzalo and Nacio. But... It has to be a left footer. Maybe can Robbo, you know, he is slowing down even for this area right here. He is slowing down. Can he do it? Would it suit a Robbo to not have to do so much defensive duties? Because going forward, he's still pretty good. You know, the way the way I've seen Ruben Amram set up is quite high. You know, he likes his fullback. Uh, well, you could say he's wide centre backs to get further up the pitch when need be. And all, of course, keeping it as tight as possible in the middle, especially when it comes back to winning ball possession. And a two in midfield have to have engines. Back then, people know it's Agate. Now it's Hojland or Hojmund. I don't know his name correctly, but he's doing that defensive. And that's why I got Bajatic. Now, Bajatic has had a growth spurt. And this is just absolute, again, bread and butter. I think this, this kid is going to have an amazing season. He got written off by a lot of people. He's been injured, but I've seen a talent from ages ago. When I saw him in that preseason, I knew enough about him. I think he's going to be that guy that, you know, 
he's going to go to and he's going to be the long-term DM for Liverpool Football Club. It's exciting. And you know what? Let him land a little bit. Again, probably my new favourite catchphrase at this moment of time. I've got Sabozlai here. You know, I think left wing, right wing space, I think he's, we've seen in this three, it's not really suited the Klopp system, not having the best this season, but I think in the left wing or sometimes the right wing space, I do believe he can operate well there. And yes, I'm missing a couple of players, but don't worry, I've got them on because there's the Curtis Jones who I want to talk about, which can be key. McAllister's McAllister is very crucial, especially when it comes to ball carrying as well. And we've seen it in the Liverpool side with it, in the eight role mainly. And then the nine is is interesting. Some will say Nunes, some will say Jota, but I've got my own theories. But yeah, look, the way Van Dijk plays, as you can see, he likes to come up in these areas right here and you can actually ping the ball. You know, we talk about Trent all day long, right wing back, it suits him to a T. Connor Bradley, Trent, it's up to you. But I think Bradley could sometimes maybe do a job there, but this is Trent's bread and butter. And this is why this area here is so key for me. I just feel like Trent's going to have the absolute freedom and ability to do what he wants. And this whole, oh, does he want to go centre mid? I think Trent just truly doesn't want to defend as much. Maybe you might see him in his, this position in the future. Who knows? But the way I like to see it, personally, is of course with Ruben Amarim. Amar he likes his 3-4-3. And I think Trent at wing back is going to be sensational. There's obviously reports of Ryan A. Nori at where is Anthony Robinson off the left, uh, left side as well. Flying wing back. Not really known for the defensive ability of cover. But... You know, who knows and watch this space for this area right here. But yeah, look, Salah. I don't think Salah's going to go. I think Salah's going to stay here. Perfect. Salah doesn't have to do that fuck out wide. He can do his playmaking any way he wants. You know, this whole area for Salah, for me, is it's just like, he's been doing this job a lot lately. This job has been Salah. Keep wide, tuck, it, tuck there and stay there. And for me, I'm not really, don't get me wrong. I think Sal is getting to his older age and he's done a brilliant job whether it's down his side of the wing. But that area there for me is not really the one for the long-term future. With Sal is obviously you want to get his fitness going. He's just a pure athlete. Now, imagine a finisher, an actual finisher going into these, <laughs> these whole areas now is crazy to me whether it's just in here or inside or even outside the area of the box you know sometimes of course if you really wanted to he can obviously go out wide and help if he wants it but i wouldn't put him there when he's in that box he's a cold cold finisher and that's the way people don't rate him i cannot believe it this guy's gonna have so much fun now he's gonna get a lot of goals and this is where it comes to even sabozla he's known to do the left wing or right wing position even then and he will have some fun here so I think Sabozlai's area, where is him or not? There's another, if I go back to another player here, ooh, well, it's up to you. I could put him down. I'm going to scroll across and there's another one that's known there as well. Curtis Jones. Curtis Jones is just as tricky. And even if you wanted to put Curtis Jones out here, give McAllister a rest. And this is what I say, the system's beautiful. You've got unknown players, untold players. You can put a Darwin Nunes in there or whoever you want. And obviously if you take McAllister away, then of course... You can fit both of them in the same team. How are you going to fit? That's the whole question. How are you going to fit all these players into this system? That's for the manager to work out. So yeah, this is what I see here, whether it's a Curtis Jones or McAllister. I do believe McAllister will be there, but a full carrier box-to-box engine like Curtis Jones is going to be absolutely sensational. Now, if we're going to move on to the first player, the left centre-back, my he's got a 60 million euro release clause. Do I believe he's going to be the one that's going to be there? I do believe it. I, I wanted him at my club for a long time. Because Salah and Nacio, what he's good at, what everything he's done, you know, whether it's for, for, you know, sporting or even for Portugal, he's just so good at defending wide space. A bit like Gabriel. Gabriel has also defended the wide space very, very well. And he's good at, very good at covering. So, Gonzalo and Nacio, see these areas right here, or even in a box here this is his areas and you know what the best thing about since again salo and nasso right not only would he cost you about 50 million quid he knows how to get forward you know that area here that right here it gives him an absolute a lot of breathing you'll find a lot of the center backs will push up very very high and even van even canate it depends on which areas you want to do but you'll see McAllister do a lot of this role and then it comes down to the badger titch you know if you got him there and then obviously what i find anyways with the striker he likes a target man, likes this area, can do a bit of everything. Bajatic, this is his, this is where I think he's going to absolutely be crucial. See this whole area here, this one here, he's going to have to do a lot of covering and guess what? Going to be brilliant at it. 
this man's going to be brilliant. Just that area is there. He's going to be absolutely sensational. He's got an engine on him, right? He's got good passing on me. He can dictate. He's quite, quite nippy with it as well. And these are just going to be brilliant. Six foot one. I've heard he's even six foot three now. People have seen the recent rumors, you know, for me. That guy has bulked up enough. Let's point like that. The size of his calves. He's been looking at Jack Grealish. But yeah, look, this is where I'm going to move on a little bit to the striker as well. If you get rid of all of this and see how they push on with this area here. See, I've got one name. And whether you want Nunes, I don't know how he fits in because Amarim, for me, he likes nippy plays and he does like a target man and someone that's actually good with their feet, right? Now, we all know as this one name and there is one name only for this one, right? And I do think you are in for a striker potentially this season. It would be this man right here, Jokerez. I would, an 80 million pounds, new manager, that means you're going to have to back them in some sort of way. I don't believe Liverpool need major, major recruitment, right? I think you've got a really good squad. And that's why even when it comes to a Nori coming into the situation as well, right? That's why I think this is the reason why he's been linked. And this probably suits why, in my opinion, why Ruben Amram's coming in. You're targeting a wing back. He knows that role very well. Wolverhampton as well. Whether you even want to put Jota in this side. Some people don't like Jota in this left wing role. I do. But... The future, A Nori, I think that's just a solid. Just let him do what he does best. Create width, get some crosses in. Does he need to improve on some of his fitness abilities? Yes, he does. Of course he does. He does pick up a few niggly injuries, but more time he is fit and he's really, really good. So I think this is a very exciting Liverpool team. Victor Gjokeres, see this guy here. What he can master, what he does. He's not a one season wonder because a lot of the times he's been, he's been in a championship as well. So he knows the trade and he's rough and tough with it. I think he's going to be, I think Liverpool will be on for him. I don't think Ivan I I Tony might be down unless it's for the right price. But in my areas, when it comes to this guy, he just invades the space. See, you got nothing but praise for this guy. But not only is he a box striker and can cover all these areas, he also goes out wide. He can do all of that. He can poach. It is what it is. Or he can even drop deep and make it a three in midfield. And that allows... None other than your sensation for Salah to really do all that driving. It just allows him to do whatever he needs to do. Go inside the box and just be an absolute menace. An absolute menace. But yeah, Gokras, I think this is where it's key. Because the system is literally relying on this, this man to get not just not only the goals. Because you've got Marcus Edwards and everything there to go and get. And even that Trincao. Not only just that, but you need him to drop deep and kick control of the midfield sometimes. Something that I've seen with Amram, he don't like his midfielders having the ball all the time. This is why I believe McAllister is going to have a, an absolute field day. When he drives at the ball, McAllister, you don't need to hand it long because guess what? You can go forward, but then you've got Trent. You've got a Nori. They're both comfortable even tucking inside at times as well if you want to make it a bit more tight. You've got Gonzalo and Nacio as well. But McAllister is going to be very, very key for the system, in my opinion. Or a Curtis Jones. And sometimes people forget you are also covered with Joe Gomez, who's been keeping fit. Just saying. I think he's going to have an absolute full day with this team. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. It's just like, it's going to be first season. There's going to be a lot of expectations. And with expectations, obviously, it comes a lot of pressure. Liverpool fans are probably known to be a bit patient. They do, they've been patient with the Nunezes of the Worlds, you know, when he didn't read out the greatest of first season. But they will be patient with this manager. You've got to give him at least a season to land. Let him get his system built because it is new. You're used to a 4-3-3 three, three, Gengen pressing. Now, all of a sudden, you go into, don't get me wrong, a bit of counter pressing and not so much possession. Not that Liverpool are really known for it, but a back three and some wing backs. And that's going to be heavily reliant on who the central midfielders are and how, how well they can perform. But even then, you've still got Endo. You've still got everybody else. But this is what I believe Liverpool's going to set up under an Amarim. And I think this could be the team that you see next season. They're going to have all the pull in the world. Giocarez, a Nori, Bajatic, whether it's a Curtis Jones or a McAllister, Trent or Bradley, Kanate or even, you know, yours truly, uh, Jones. I think Kwanzaa, people forget about Kwanzaa as well. They call him Virgil van Kwanzaa these days. Whether it's here, there... Or on the left, he can do that. And that's the whole point of getting a left-sided centre-back. And what I do like as well about, you know, Amram, it's just the way he just, it's just the way he sets up. Even if he was to move all of this, picks up the ball, gets his better players out on a ball. Let's say a McAllister has, has like one of his bigger midfielders out there. Literally, the way he sets up, 
two center backs. It will literally get his one of his other center backs to pull wide. I mean, pull forward. Sorry, pull his other ones pull forward. It will find that center mid will make it like this. Keep it wide. You got your target man if you want to go long, and then you got them in these spaces here. So Allison with the ball is going to be it's going to be quite easy for, in my opinion. You know, setting up like you, if you see sporting, if you have watched sporting, anyone just go watch it. Never typically never goes into here. Never goes into there. All the time, it's always going to be options. People are going to press high, but this is why I find this man's going to be very important, and especially your wing backs as well. They're going to be very important, and a lot of the times you will just see it fizzed, and you won't get the ball. It's as simple as that. You can try, but you're not getting the ball. Whether he's going to pass it out there or out here, the whole point of Van Dyke is just drag people away as well because you have to focus if he's really good on the ball, and then you just got your men in McAllister and Bajetic are also good on the ball. So good luck. Good luck trying to get the ball with them. I think this is perfect for you lot, in my opinion. Don't think there's really much else to really see it, but you can go see pictures. You can go see stability. If you want to see pictures in the side to back up what I say, I'm trying. <laughs> but yeah, do smash a like. Liverpool fans, be excited. This man is going to be sensational, trust me. And you're going to get him. It's so, so obvious. But yeah, smash a like, subscribe, and we'll be back for another one. Maybe I might see how Man City and we might set up for this weekend tomorrow, potentially.